Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Th this video, today's video, is about the 408 small block Ford Dyno Mule. It got dynoed finally. So in this video, the only thing I'm comparing is two different cams. That's all that was done. But if you, I did compare other things in the same session. So next week's video, I'm going to show you. I also tested three different manifolds. I did a live feed when I was doing this last, I think it was two weeks ago or last week. I can't remember. Weeks just kind of go together. But... Anyway, I did a live feed and you could see it, but I didn't reveal the numbers because I was too busy working on the engine. Primarily the reason for the live feed was to see how long it would take us to change a cam. But anyway, this video is simply about the two differences in power between the two cams and the specs on those. For those that have forgotten what this small block Ford Dyno Mule is, here's the rundown of it. It's a stock block, so it's 430 bore, four inch stroke, eagle crank, this was actually donated by a viewer to use for testing, and it's got DSS pistons, which are ditched. That's kind of the downside because it yields about a 10.5 compression ratio with the heads I used. The heads were supposed to be like 56 cc chambers. When I cc'd them, 60, which yields 10.5 to 1, which in a way, I feel bad because when you look at the power numbers for this Ford, you're like, man, that Chevy and the LS that you did the Dynamo on were so much better. How come this is not as good? And the reason being is, it's a point lower on compression. So it's quite a bit lower on compression when the other two ones were, but that's what it is. As far as camshafts, since that's really what this video is about, the first cam that was in there was a trick flow cam, and I'm gonna show you the specs here in just a second, but it was a hydraulic roller camshaft. And I know you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, the other stuff's all solid roller. I didn't run it as a hydraulic roller, so I put solid roller lifters on it, lashed it at eight thousandths. The second cam that was tested was from Daniel Powell. And I'm a, it's a solid roller, a true solid roller camshaft, and we lashed it at 16 as compared to the 8,000s that you do on the um, trick flow. By the way, that 8,000s on the trick flow was cold, so when it warmed up, it's probably closer to 6 to 4, which is about the you know normal rate. Anyway, both of them ran. I will say that this probably, probably skews the numbers a little bit when I tell you this part. Um, the headers that were used were a 1 and 7 8 step to 2 inch which is a pretty large header tube diameter. So in general, what I'm saying this is because it's going to skew those numbers in the higher RPM. From my dyno experience in general, if you put on really large headers, it doesn't necessarily kill the torque as bad as you would think down low, it does hurt it. But it definitely ships the whole power band up top. So when you look at the durations and stuff, you're like, I can't believe you made that much power that further on. It's really, I think, the headers. The heads that were used are a it's a Chinese casting. I sell those. Imagine if I the heads right now. I've got one pair in stock, and they're sixteen fifty. But they are they're a Chinese imitation of the AFR two hundred five head. They got eight millimeter valves. They're a two hundred eight intake valve, one six hundred exhaust valve. Now, I did modify the heads, so I did the valve job. I blended the throat and blended the chambers. Uh, that's probably why the chambers ended up at sixty cc's and caused the compression ratio to be to ten and a half to one. But as far as intake manifolds that went. The one that was tested for both these camshaft was a JEGS single plane manifold. And it's the one that they get. S several people wrote in and said, that's just a hurricane intake. And it may be, I don't know. But that's what it is, it's a Chinese intake as well. Carburation's a 1,000 CFM Demon carburetor I use for most everything I test with. It's a 4150, and it had an AFR four-hole tapered spacer. And that's a rundown on it. So let's show, let me show you the cam card for the trick flow, and then we'll show the dyno results for that, and then I'll show you the cam card for the uh, Daniel Powell's camshaft, and I'll show the dyno results, and I'll show you the overlays. Next week, by the way, I'll be showing the three intakes that were tested, and that'll be next week's video. But here, let's start off with the cam specs. If you're having a hard time seeing any of this stuff, in the description for this video is a link to purchase all the dyno data from the session. So you don't even have to wait till next week to do that. And it'll all be sent to you in a digital copy. And you can see all of it, you can blow it up on your screen and be much easier. But for those that can't, here's what it is. So this is the trick flow camshaft. The camshaft duration on intake side is 250 on the intake at 50,000s, 254 on exhaust, 595 lift, 110 lobe separation, and it's ground with three degrees advance. Like I said, it's a hydraulic roller cam, you get this from Summit. Here are the heads. This is a picture of the head I happened to do before I put it together on the engine. And this is what it flowed. And I'll be honest with you, I was really surprised it did what it did. So it's flowing like 317, which is really, really well. I just didn't think it would do that great, but it does. It flows 220s on the exhaust without an exhaust pipe attached. And this is on my signs bench on the 430 bore. 
Unfortunately, I didn't get time to even float on the Superflow, so I don't have swirl numbers or anything like that on it. It would have read a little bit higher on the Superflow, but that's it. And here's what it, the power combination that it made. It made 563 horsepower, we'll round it up, at 6,300 RPM and 518 foot-pounds of torque at 5,100 RPM. Again, I think both of those kind of got raised up just because of the fact of the bigger headers. But pretty good power, nothing to complain about for sure. After that run, we switched to this Daniel Powell camshaft. Now, his is actually similar on some of the durations. So, like, the intake duration is 254 degrees at 50 thousandths. So that's four degrees more than a trick flow. The exhaust, however, is 267 degrees at 50 thousandths, which is a lot more. And then the lobe separation ends up being 108 LSA. So it's a little bit tighter lobe separation. The lift, of course, went up to 658. Um, and I think it's 630. You can see on the sheet what it is on the exhaust. Now, remember, though, that's that lift, I tell you, that 658, that's not taking out lash. You take out lash, you know, you're not that far off from the actual lift of the trick flow cam. So that's what it is, and let's see what kind of power it makes. Here's what it did with the Powell camshaft. So it raised the peak... Uh, horsepower up to 580 and it did it at 6800 rpm i did try going further and it just did the same so it nosed over about there on this intake and then the peak torque was 517 so it's down one foot pound of torque but it only increased that rpm for peak torque by 100 rpm which is strange that it brought the peak horsepower up by 400 rpm or so but only 100 rpm for peak torque so a little bit different i'm gonna show you the overlay in just a minute so you can get a better idea but really nice power gain for what it did. So let me show you the overlay so we can see where the differences actually are between the two camshafts. Here's the comparison. I'm gonna go ahead and warn you that that little dip you see at the beginning, that little actually spike at the beginning, that's from the way that the dyno was loaded. In other words, he didn't let it settle down before he pressed the go button. So it skews the numbers, it looks like it's better. The black line's the trick flow cam and the red is the PAL cam. As you could tell, the trick flow is better to about 5,100 or so. And then PALS takes over from there. Anyway, it's it's a really nice gain. On averages, the PALS can better on the horsepower and torque for averages. And that's even with that spike that makes the trick flow one look better. Now, we only pulled it from 4,400 to 6,800 RPM, which is about the range of an average bracket race motor, I'd say you'd run. Now, several of you, I can already comment, why didn't you pull it down lower? You should have pulled it down lower because I've said a bazillion times, but I'll repeat it one more time. Pulling it down at 2,500 and 3,000 RPM to get your max torque and see what those numbers are are the most pointless things unless you're in a boat with propped to go that low because there is no vehicle full towing that they chose to pull wide open throttle at 3,000 RPM. If they do it, that's it's ridiculous most of the time you're going to downshift and you guess where you're going to be 4400 rpm hence why we start there so at least you got that data now that's a pretty good gain though as you could tell from the two camshafts even though the durations really don't look that far off and it's what they are so interesting something to think about it um tell me what you think in the comments well, that about wraps it up for this week. Uh, next week will be the 3D intake manifolds. We've got a Super Victor that got tested, that Jags one that was on this one, and a YN Stealth dual plane. So that's next week's testing. You get to see that. So stay tuned. Guys, thanks for watching. I uh, really appreciate all my viewers and uh, letting me test all this stuff, especially Bill Brennick. Also, Buffalo Head Motorsports, which is great. He's the one that actually painted my S10 and my Camaro. He uh, let me borrow his crank trigger to maybe make this happen. So I'm going to leave you with this one little tech tip, though. So, yeah, you got all this stuff here. This is a huge tech tip because this is twice now this thing's happened. On a crank trigger, make sure you have 60 thousandths of gap. You might be tempted to tighten that up and it's going to make it better, you would think. Incorrect. So, because what happened with this when we switched the camshaft, we had to put that crank trigger back on because it was made for like a power bond and we had an ATI dampener on there. Anyway, so I had a little play. 
it was like within 30,000. So we put the PAL camshaft on it for several of the runs. It ran like crap because it kept breaking up at the higher RPM because the crank trigger got too close to the um, wheel. So that 60 thousandths recommend because as soon as we did that, perfect, no problems whatsoever. So there's your little tech tip. Don't go tighter thinking it's better because any little piece of dirt gets in there that messes it up too. So 60 thou. Anyway, there's that. So thanks to those two guys for that and all the viewers that keep watching. I am no Superman. I did raise Superboy. I don't port cast iron heads. You guys take care.